Welcome back to the channel. We're back out on the road. We're heading to Lake Havasu for the Major League Fishing Toyota Series event out on Lake Havasu. Super excited to get out there, but I know the fishing has been tough, so it's gonna be a grinder. I'm already prepared for that. I'm trying to get mentally prepared. But in today's video, instead of just talking on the way to the lake, we're gonna talk about five tactics to overcome struggling in tournaments. If you've been watching some of my content, you'll know that I've been struggling a little bit in my tournaments, and I'm gonna talk about five different things that I'm doing to try to get to be a better fisherman and to have better finishes in my tournaments. And guys, this event and this video is sponsored by GCI Outdoor, Six Sense Fishing, Waterland Fishing Optics, and Do It Molds. All those companies are making it possible for me to get out on the water at Lake Havasu and compete in this tournament. For anyone not familiar, GC Outdoor is an outdoor chairs and table company. They make stadium seats and stuff like that. Great quality products, highly recommended. Discount code for them is MLF15. It's going to save you 15% and they always have free shipping over on their website. And another company with the discount code is Six Sense Fishing and you guys know all about Six Sense. I've been catching tons of fish on their baits all year long and even longer than that. Discount code for them is LUNA10. And then Waterland Fishing Optics, those are the sunglasses that I wear out on the water. I've been talking to you guys about them all year long and they are a staple that I have in my boat and on my head every single day, whether I'm at work, whether I'm out on the water, whether I'm driving in my truck, I have a pair of Waterland sunglasses on my face. Um, I'm gonna be looking for those to be doing a lot of work for me in practice as well, cutting down the glare so I can see some of these small mouth and large mouth bath bass out on Lake Havasu. Maybe they're just following my baits. Clear water at Lake Havasu, seeing as much as I can down the water, grass lines, uh, man-made habitat that's, that's down there, and just fish that are following baits is going to be key out on Lake Havasu. And a discount code for Waterland is LUNA15. And then we got Dual Molds. Um, in the future, I'm going to be doing a video talking about all the different tackle that I've made for this trip in particular. I'm going to go over some different ones that I think are going to be big players for me out on Lake Havasu. If you end up wanting to make any of your own tackle, need to add anything to your tackle making arsenal, please use my affiliate link that is down in the description of today's video. It's the only way that Dual Molds knows that my contact is getting in front of you guys. What I want to get into is the first thing that I am doing to make a conscious effort into improving my tournament fishing success. The first tactic that I wanna to talk to you guys about that I'm using myself to get better at fishing and to have more success in tournaments, and I think that you guys can definitely use this, the, all these tips as well. And what I'm trying to do first is learn new techniques. So I'm learning crankbaits, I'm learning big worms, buzz baits, the wobble head. All of those things are relatively new techniques for me over the last couple of years where I've really started focusing in on trying to learn new techniques. I've spent a lot of times trying to hone in and learn how to fish crankbaits the big worm was a big factor in my success this year, this summer. Caught a lot of quality fish on it and caught a lot of numbers as well. The buzzbait was another bait that I really learned a lot about this year. How to modify that thing a lot better, how to get it to work better, how to catch more fish just more consistently. I caught some big fish on the buzzbait as well this year. And then the wobble head is definitely another bait that I am using that I think is gonna help me cover a lot of water, it's gonna help me be more versatile, I think it's gonna help me in my tournament practice, and I think it's gonna help me catch some fish that I wouldn't have caught before without knowing that technique. So whatever baits you guys need to get better at, start spending time learning them, start focusing on how to fish those baits, how to get better at it, it's gonna help you be more versatile, and it's gonna help you catch more fish. Okay, so tonight's dilemma is In-N-Out Burger or Panda Express. And for those of you guys that watched some of my Sam Rayburn, maybe Texoma videos on the way out, I stopped at Whataburger. I definitely think that I lean towards In-N-Out Burger over Whataburger. I know that's gonna make some of you guys angry, but if you haven't had In-N-Out Burger, then you don't necessarily know what you're missing. Dinner was pretty good as you guys saw there, but getting into the second tactic that I want to talk about in today's video is learning to fish faster. That's something that I've been really focusing on as well this year, and it's not necessarily working the bait faster. 
but it's moving from spot to spot a little bit more quickly. Basically, I've been finding that if I'm gonna get bit, I get bit pretty quickly. So it's a matter of fishing more efficiently. It's still working a jig slow or fishing a worm slow or fishing a chatterbait or whatever bait correctly, the right speed, giving it the right kinds of action and stuff like that, but it's not staying in one spot longer than necessary because a lot of times, if you're gonna get bit, you're gonna get bit right away. Now there's times where this doesn't always work out for you, but I've been finding a lot lately that if I get bit, I'm gonna get bit right away and even if I stay a little bit longer, I just, I don't end up getting bit. It doesn't matter how much I milk that spot, I don't end up getting bites. So just using my time more wisely, bouncing around from spot to spot to spot, and then once I get those bites, then slowing down and then trying to get everything I can out of that particular spot. So as you saw when I pulled up, it was a little sketchy in that gas station. The cops had some dude out of the car. There was a ton of people around. Some like homeless dudes were hanging out. It was, it was a little bit of a, a funky little gas station stop right there. But I pumped the gas, got some ice for the cooler, and then came over here so I could uh, give you the next tip on the next tactic that I'm using to try to do better in my tournaments. So the next thing that I'm trying to do is focus on finding bigger fish because a lot of times I don't have a problem catching fish or finding fish to go catch or getting bites. A lot of times I have a problem with catching the, the quality that I need. For example, one of my last tournaments I fished out at the Delta. I was getting bites consistently throughout the tournament, but I could not get any decent fish. I, I literally weighed five fish for six pounds. I think it was on the Delta or nine pounds or something like that. Total garbage weight for the Delta. I needed to have better quality fish, obviously, for me to have any type of success in that tournament. Now catching bigger fish versus smaller fish can sometimes be as simple as using bigger baits or using reaction baits versus a worm or vice versa. It just kind of depends on the scenario and that's where practice really comes into play. What I want to do is, like I was talking about with some of the sunglasses that I was talking about with the water lens and being able to see some of the fish is finding areas with better fish. Sometimes you don't always get those bites but if you're around clear water throwing a swim bait like a trace or the draw or something like that, you're going to be able to draw those fish out and you'll be able to see those followers when you have a good quality pair of sunglasses. So I'm hoping that even if I don't get a lot of bites on those baits in practice, I'll be able to see some of the fish in the different areas and then I can start focusing on those areas and figuring out how to get those fish to bite. Another thing that I've learned over time is a lot of times if you're fishing for tournament winning fish, you're not always getting a lot of bites. Uh, there was a recent tournament out here on Lake Havasu. It was a team championship out here on Lake Havasu. Guys dropped 22 pounds, which is good weight out here at Lake Havasu. It's good weight pretty much anywhere. But they only had seven bites for that entire day on a boat with two guys. So between two guys, they got seven bites. That's three and a half bites per person. That's not even a limit in the tournament that I'm fishing. So I'm in a tough spot trying to figure out what can I do to get bit, but at the same time figuring out what kind of quality I'm going to need. Because in order to do good in this tournament, I'm still going to need, you know, 15 to 20 pounds a day in order to really compete in order to get that top 10 in order to be in a position to have a really really good tournament I'm still gonna need that kind of quality even though the bites tough the next thing that I'm doing is a lot of what you guys are doing with my channel specifically is I'm trying to learn more about fishing general education I like to call it for fishing that could be something like Bass University that Mike Iaconelli has or it could be other YouTube content or other friends that are better than you at fishing, no different lakes better than you, no different techniques better than you do, but going out there and finding new information that's gonna help you become a better fisherman. Now what I don't recommend in this scenario is asking people for spots. If you're asking people questions about what can you do to be a better fisherman, how can you fish a jig better? How can you fish a worm better? How can you fish a swim bait better? Those are good questions to ask, but asking people for their spots isn't helping you really at all. It might help you get a few more bites, it might help you put a few more fish in the boat, but you're not learning how to find your own fish. And if you're trying to fish tournaments, you need to find your own fish. And the only way to do that is time on the water and figuring out what works for you, figuring out what your routine is gonna be when you go out on the water and try to find those fish. Guys, we still have like at least three hours left 
on the trip out to Lake Havasu right now. So I'm gonna get back in the truck, but stay tuned because I got another tactic for you. And then I also have a bonus tip at the very end that I think you guys wanna stick around for. So let's get back in the truck, let's head out, and then we'll stop for gas one more time and I'll, I'll get to a couple more of these tips before we end up at the hotel. I've got to fish more. And that's basically what it boils down to is time on the water. You can want to go online and use that tactic because when you can't get on the water, learning from online or learning from a video or watching a fishing show or something like that is great to learn from. But at the end of the day, you got to get on the water. For me in the summertime, maximum I'm going to get two days out on the water in one week. Most of the time it's going to be once a week. But I get fortunate enough to be able to come out and do some of these events where I'm gonna be able to get multiple days out on the water, but I'm trying to maximize my time out of the water, and I think if you guys do that same thing, go fishing even when you don't feel like it. Go fishing when the conditions aren't gonna be perfect. Go fishing when the fish aren't biting, because all of that kind of stuff adds to the time on the water, adds to your ability to learn how to fish tough conditions, learn how to fish new techniques, all that stuff's really important. It's something that I'm focusing on is trying to get out on the water more often or as much as possible and just try to learn how to catch as many fish and as big as fish as possible. And I think if you do that same thing, you're gonna get better, whether that turns into tournament success or not, who knows, but for sure, you're gonna become a better fisherman. Guys, make sure to stick around. We still have one more bonus tip that I'm gonna talk about once we get to the hotel. So hang out till then and uh, get that last little bonus tip on, on what I think you can do to become a better tournament fisherman. tip that I wanted to talk to you guys about today is you got to keep fishing tournaments if you want to have tournament success and you're struggling right now you have to persevere in tournament fishing because there's nothing that you can do that's going to completely replicate tournament fishing unless you fish tournaments so even if you're struggling even if you're having a hard time like I'm going through that myself we got to keep fishing we got to keep getting into those tournaments we got to keep going and practicing refining how we practice refining how we find fish figuring out how to find fish faster how to get more bites how to catch more fish all of it starts adding up and we got to keep doing it in that tournament environment because you can't replicate tournament conditions unless you're in that tournament so stay tuned for the rest of my lake havasu content i think you guys are going to enjoy it i'm going to do things a little bit differently i'm going to try to cover different topics while i'm out tournament fishing i've had people talk to me in the past about you know, it, get, it gets kind of long when you have so many days of practice going into the tournament. So what I'm trying to do in these videos is cover different topics like I did in this on the way to Lake Havasu video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of format. I'm going to keep going with it throughout this tournament, at least in practice. And then once the tournament starts, it's just going to be all fishing all the time because that's that's why we're here. We're here to fish. We're here to, to try to compete have a good tournament. So if you guys want to keep watching some of my content, make sure to click on one of the videos that are on the screen right now. And now would be a great time to subscribe and like today's video. I really appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you thought of today's video and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.